In this video, we'll explore time domain reflectometers and apply time domain transmission line concepts in order to see what a time domain reflectometer would see. A time domain reflectometer, or TDR, is an instrument that can be used to determine the characteristics of uh, transmission lines by observing the reflected waveforms from those lines, similarly to how a radar works, and it can be used to help identify faults in the cables. A TDR consists of a very well calibrated DC voltage source, a very carefully matched impedance, a switch, a very precise voltmeter, and a DSP. The switch closes quickly when the TDR is connected, resulting in a sharp transient, and the magnitude of the source would then propagate down the line, and since the propagation occurs at a fraction of the speed of light, there will be some delay before a, before a wave entering one end of the line would reach the other end of the line. And after this propagation delay, a reflection may propagate back down the line due to changes in um, impedance and be registered in the measured voltage of the TDR. And using a TDR, we can see things that occur on a nanosecond or even picosecond scale with respect to time. Perhaps the most important parameter that you may need to enter into your TDR is the velocity factor, which is the percentage of the speed of light by which the pulse propagates through, through the cable. And this can be used with time in order to determine the distance to a point where, where a reflection occurs using this formula. Velocity factor times the time times 0.5 will give you the distance. And we multiply this by 0.5 because the overall time includes the return trip time as well. We know that we can use a multimeter to see if we have an open or short in a wire by testing both of its ends, but we can't necessarily tell where that short or open would occur at. So we can test suspected cables, such as coaxial cables, using the TDR to see where the cable is damaged based off of the reflection and the velocity of propagation that we entered into the TDR. It is, a TDR is also, for example, useful for locating shorts or other problems among the miles of cabling inside a plane or troubleshooting a computer network that can have, have hundreds of miles of wire. The TDR can actually save hours or even days of troubleshooting time. Shown here is the model that we will be using for a lossless transmission line, which is composed of an inductance and a shunt capacitance, and we will be using this formula here to calculate the reflection coefficient, which is the new impedance minus the old impedance over the new impedance plus the old impedance. In case one, we will analyze this circuit where A is a resistor that is any value that is not Z0, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. We assume that the generator impedance will match the transmission line impedance. So by sketching this out by hand, we can see that the reflection coefficient at the generator will be zero. So no reflections will occur at the generator. To get the initially measured voltage Vm, we can use voltage division to calculate Vm equals Vs times Z0 over Z0 plus Z0, which is equal to Vs over two. We do this because we can initially only see the generator impedance and the characteristic impedance of the transmission line because it takes time for a wave to propagate through the transmission line. So initially we treat it as if the rest of the circuit on the other side of the transmission line just isn't there. So in the case that R equals Z0, the load is matched because Z0 equals Z0. So the reflection coefficient in this case would be zero. So no reflections occur and the measured voltage is Vs over two for all T. In the case that R is greater than Z0, we have that the reflection coefficient is equal to R minus Z0 over R plus Z0, and the reflection coefficient is in the range of between 0 and 1, because it has to be positive since R is greater, and the maximum it can be is 1, since infinity over infinity in the case of an open circuit would be 1. So a reflection occurs that increases the measured voltage when it reaches the generator side after another propagation time of T, and the measured voltage is equal to Vs over 2 plus the reflection coefficient times Vs over 2, which is greater than Vs over 2. In the case that the resistance is less than the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, we have that the reflection coefficient is in the range of negative 1 to 0 because the minimum reflection coefficient occurs when R is equal to 0, which would have be negative Z0 over Z0 or negative 1. And since R is less than Z0, it will all, the reflection coefficient will remain negative. So signal loss occurs. And a reflection occurs that decreases the measured voltage when it reaches the generator side after another propagation time of T, or T equals 2T. So the measured voltage is equal to Vs over 2 plus the reflection coefficient times Vs over 2, which is less than Vs over 2. Here we have sketched out the measured voltages for this case. 
where r equals in with r equals z naught the measured voltage remains the same at as vs over 2 since no reflections occur and if r is greater than z naught the characteristic impedance of the transmission line then the measured voltage jumps up from vs over 2 to vs over 2 plus the reflection coefficient times vs over 2 at 2t when the reflection reaches the generator end and if r is less than z naught the opposite occurs where at when the reflection reaches the generator end at 2t then the measured voltage jumps down to the voltage of vs over 2 plus the reflection coefficient times vs over 2. Now we're looking at case 2 we're going to analyze the same circuit but in this case we're going to replace a with a capacitor. We can sketch the situation out and see that matching occurs at the generator end so the reflection coefficient there will be zero so no reflections will occur at the generator end. The initial measured voltage calculation will be the same in this case, where we use voltage division to determine that the measured voltage is Vs over 2. We know that the capacitor will initially act like a short when the waveform reaches the capacitor, so at the load end, so the reflection coefficient in this case would be 0 minus Z0 over 0 plus Z0, or negative 1. So the reflected wave that would propagate back would be negative 1 times Vs over 2, and signal loss results. So when this reflection reaches the generator end, the measured voltage would be Vs over 2 minus Vs over 2, or 0 volts. In the steady state, by understanding the transmission line model that was presented earlier, we know that the transmission line will act like a short in the steady state, since inductors act like shorts and capacitors act like opens, and the capacitor will act like an open circuit. So in this case, we can easily see that the measured voltage will equal Vs in the steady state since no current drop will since, since there is no current in an open circuit so no voltage drop will occur across Z naught. Here we have sketched the measured voltage to qualitatively show what happens to the voltage over the measured voltage over time. The measured voltage begins at a value of Vs over 2 and then at time 2t when the initial reflection reaches the generator it drops down to zero and then there is an exponential transient defined by the time constant of the capacitor in order for the measured voltage to reach, to reach the steady state voltage of Vs. In this example, we're going to show what happens when A is an inductor in the circuit. We can sketch the situation out by hand and see that the reflection coefficient at the generator is zero, so no reflections will occur there. The calculation for the initially measured voltage is the same as before, where you can use voltage division to determine that the measured voltage will be Vs over 2. When the voltage waveform first reaches the load end and hits the inductor, the, we know that the inductor will initially act like an open circuit, so we have a reflection coefficient of infinity minus Z0 over infinity plus Z0, or the reflection coefficient is 1. So the reflected wave that would propagate back would be Vs over 2, a total reflection. So when this wave reaches the generator end after another time t, or t equals 2t, the measured voltage will be Vs over 2 plus Vs over 2, which is equal to Vs. In the city state, we know that the inductor will act like a short circuit, and the transmission line will also act like a short circuit. So we can see that the voltage measured here would be 0 volts, since they are shorted. Here we have sketched out the measured voltage for this case, where the initial voltage is Vs over 2, and at time 2t, when the reflection reaches the generator, the initial reflection, then it jumps up to Vs, and then there's an exponential transient defined by the time constant of the inductor until the measured voltage reaches a value of zero in the steady state. In this case, we'll analyze this circuit, where A is a resistor of R equals Z0, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, and B is a capacitor. By sketching this situation out, we can see that the reflection coefficient at the generator end and the load end will be zero, so no reflections will occur at the generator or the load. In this situation, the initial measured voltage will be the same as before. We have that the measured voltage through voltage division will be Vs over 2. When the waveform first reaches the junction, we have that the capacitor will act like a short, so everything to the right of the capacitor will be shorted, and we have that then the reflection coefficient here will be Z0 minus Z0 over Z0 plus Z0, or 0, so there will be no reflection initially, and the measured voltage will equal Vs over 2. 
In the steady state, we know that the capacitor will act like an open circuit and the transmission lines will act like a short. So we can use voltage division to find the measured voltage here, which will be Vs times 2 Z0 over 3 Z0, which will equal to 2 thirds Vs. Here we have sketched out the measured voltage for this case, where Vs over where the voltage begins at Vs over 2, and at time 2t, there is no jump because there is initially no reflection, but after an exponential transient, the voltage the measured voltage transitions to the steady state voltage of two thirds of Vs. For this final case, we will take A to be an inductor and B to be a resistor of resistance Z0. Here we have sketched out the situation by hand by substituting in the appropriate elements, and we can see that no reflections occur at the generator load because the, ref co the reflection coefficients there are zero. The initially measured voltage is again the same. Through voltage division, we get that the initial measured voltage will be Vs over 2. We know that the inductor will initially act like an open circuit, so there will be a total reflection since the reflection coefficient in this case will be 1, so the reflected wave will be Vs over 2, and the measured voltage will be Vs over 2 plus Vs over 2, which equals Vs, once that reflected wave reaches the generator at time 2t. In the steady state, we know that the inductor and the transmission lines will both act like short circuits, and through voltage division, we can determine that the measured voltage here will be Vs over 3. Here we have sketched out the measured voltage in this situation, where the initial measured voltage is Vs over 2. At times 2t, when the reflection reaches the generator end, it will jump up to Vs, and then after an exponential transient defined by the time constant of the inductor, the measured voltage will reach the steady state voltage of one-third Vs.